In this video I'm going to do some circle theorem proofs. Um, now I don't really know where I'm going with them but we'll we'll see and we'll do them individually. Right, first thing I'll need is a circle. Right, let's grab this up. Now what we know is that, uh, and we'll start off with some nice ones, we know that angles in a semicircle are 90 degrees. So don't worry too much about the exact um, geometry here it's just going to give you a rough idea so here's a circle and we would always denote this one by having o the center point just here so if you don't see that you can't make the assumption and what the assumption is is that angles in a semicircle are going to be 90 degrees and we're going to show how that works right so let's get a line now that's a radius right there and what i'm going to do is i don't want that one i want that one this right here is going to be a radius, this right here is going to be a radius, and this right here is going to be a radius. So whatever this angle is here, we'll call A, this one is going to be A. This one right here has got to be the same as the one down here, which is going to be B. Now bear in mind that this, although these look the same, you can have the occasion, for example, when, let's just give you an example now, that this is over here. So don't take A and B to be the same, because if we've got this scenario over here, then quite clearly A and B are not going to be the same. So A and B are two different angles. Now, what we know is the following. We know that angles in a triangle add up to 180. So let's add our angles. We've got 2A plus 2B is equal to 180. So 2A plus 2B is equal to 180. So if we divide this by 2, A plus B has got to equal 90. And we can see we've got A plus B at the top. Therefore, angles in a semicircle have a 90 degree right angle at the circumference. So that's sorted. OK, here's another one. Hopefully, we know that if we've got the following, if we have a centre point, we have what we call the arrow theorem. And again, apologies that this centre is possibly not perfect. And what we say is that this angle just here, angles at the centre are double that at the circumference. Now, if we look at this in terms of a triangle, what we can do is run the line down here. And I'm going to do that. Let's get that one. Now, if I take that through here, the sum of the interior angles of the triangle are equal to the exterior one. So this one right here, and this one right here, okay, I'm going to call this A, and I'm going to call this A. Therefore, the external angle right here is going to be 2A. Now, the reason this, these are both A is because this is a radius and this is a radius. Therefore, the isosceles triangle is going to create A and A, therefore 2A. Now, this is going to be a different angle, which we'll call B. Again, another radius, so this one will be B. So, the sum of the interior angles is going to be the um, exterior one. If you think what we're going to have, this is going to be 2A. Now, uh, sorry, 2B. So these two added up are going to be this one right here because angles on a straight line equal 180 and angles in a triangle equal 180. So what we can quite clearly see here now is that the angle at the top is A plus B, uh, not A plus 2, and then the one at the centre is going to be 2A plus B. So angles at the centre are double that at the circumference. OK, next one. we got a cyclic quadrilateral and we can make this any place we want. Opposite angles in this quadrilateral are going to be equal in 180. If I put a centre dot here and then I just run some tangents from here, uh, sorry tangent radius, that's what I wanted to say, radius, that's a radius, that's a radius, all of these are of equal length, they have to be. If that's the centre of a circle, then we've got four radii. So what I'm going to do, this right here is going to create an isosceles triangle with angle size A and A. This is a different isosceles triangle with angle size B and B. This is a further different one. You can quite clearly see their different sizes, C. And then finally, another isosceles triangle with D. 
What we know is that the angles in a four-sided shape equal 360. Quadrilaterals have interior angles of 360. 2a plus 2b plus 2c plus 2d. So 2a plus 2b plus 2c plus 2d is going to equal 360. Split this whole thing by 2. a plus b plus c plus d is equal to 180. Now if you carefully study, I've got an a plus a b here and a c plus a d there. a plus b plus c plus d is equal to 180 degrees. And if we look here, a, d, b and c. a plus b plus c plus d equals 180. So that's sorted. OK, let's uh, get another one. Right, where are we? We'll have this one. Next one we're going to do is the tangent one. Now, if I draw a tangent, what the circle theorem says, a tangent to any point of the circle is going to be equidistant, and that is touching. Don't overanalyze thinking, oh, it might have just gone through. What we're saying then is that this right here and this right here, this point we'll call out here P, and this one can be A, and this one can be B, then these are equal. Those lengths are equal. Now if we put a centre point on here, then what we can do is run a radius. So if I run a radius up to A, uh, let's change that colour in fact, let's make this a little more obvious. If I run a radius to A, and I run a radius to B, and then I put a line through the middle, just here, then what we know is that a, a tangent creates a right angle. So this one is a right angle. This we'll call x, and this has got to be x as well. And this is a right angle. They share this line. This line is a, a bisector, a perpendicular bisection of, uh, sorry, just a bisection of this angle p. So if this is x and that's x, they've both got a right angle here, and they've both got, uh, they share the same hypotenuse, then by the uh, congruency uh, test, we can say that right angle hypotenuse side RHS means that these ones have to be the same. These are two congruent triangles. So right angle, both got a right angle, both share the same side length and also they have the same hypotenuse. So therefore PA is equal to PB. Okay. Right, here comes the, uh, the kind of nasty one. What we say, if we've got the alternate segment, we say the following. We say, now, and I'll put this up here. We suggest now that this angle right here, and I'm going to call this A, is going to be the same as this one right here, which is going to be A. Now, what I'm going to do to prove this is rely on a couple of things we already know. I'm going to put a centre spot just here. If I run a, um, a tangent up from here, then that whole angle just here is going to be 90 degrees. I'm going to put another one up there. Now, if I drop a perpendicular down here, I've got that line. So, what we know then is that this angle has got to be 90 minus A. If this whole angle, because of the tangent creating a right angle, is 90, that's A, that's 90 minus A. I've dropped a perpendicular, so that's 90, and this is going to be A. A radius, a radius, and this perpendicular is going to cut the line in half, meaning that this angle here is going to be 90 minus A. This angle is going to be 90, and this one is going to be A. Let's go back. We've now used a couple of theorem here. Angles at the center. Remember now what we've got. If you look at this carefully, we've got, and I'll put it on here, we've got the arrow. We've revisited the arrow. Angles at the center are double that at the circumference. So what have I got at the center? I've got 2A. What have I got just here? A. So that tells me that this angle right here and this one are going to be the same. And you can quite happily prove that for the other side as well. Um, but that should, that should hold. 
So there we go, they're the circle theorem, the main ones that you'll use. You may get, un unfortunately, be, well, I doubt you'll ever get asked to prove anything anymore, but um, if needs be, we can look at another one. Now, this one's called the bow, uh, and I'll try and draw it and make this pretty um, possible to, to understand. Right, let's do this. Let's see if I can bend the rules a little. What it states is that this angle right here is going to be the same as this angle, and then these two are also going to be the same, but not the same as those necessarily. So what we would have, we'd have this one being called, uh, let's call this one A, this one too is going to be A, and then this one would be B, and then this one would be B. I'll leave the Bs off for now. Now what we're going to do is the following. I'm going to put up a centre spot, I'll put it just there. And I appreciate it's probably not the centre, but I'm trying not to confuse things a little. So what we're going to do is the following. Let's put on this right here. In fact, we'll put on the black one. If I run from the same chord, essentially this is a chord right here. If I run now an angle here, then what we learned before is that this angle right here, angles at the center, are going to be double that at the circumference. So if I check this now, let's, um, let's look at it with this one. If we think what we're doing, we're picking that one up, so this angle has got to be double that one. And then if we went the other way, then that angle, again, here's another arrow. I'm doing two different arrows. Then these two angles down here, let's put that on. That's going to be 2A. So these two angles are going to be A. Okay, So they're going to equal each other. And we could show that quite comfortably for B and B by switching this around. But essentially that's all we need to show. Angles subtended off the same chord will have uh, equal angles at the circumference. And it's a branch off of the, um, the angles at the centre and arrow theorem. So hopefully that's been of some use. Um, I'm not sure that you even have to prove them anymore at GCSE. But it's always nice to have some appreciation of them.